this is worksheet one of the polyatomic packet. And this packet is going to be similar to the last two packets in that we're going to learn how to name a type of compound, basically. And we're also going to learn how to draw pictures of it. Uh, the difference is that so far in the previous two packets, we've talked about compounds made with just two different elements, either a metal and a nonmetal or two nonmetals. But in this packet, we're going to learn how to name and draw pictures of compounds with more than two elements in them. And in all of the examples that we look at, what it's going to be is um, an element combined with something called a polyatomic ion. Okay, now if we break down the term polyatomic ion, poly means many, atomic means atoms, and ion means charged. So that's basically your definition. A polyatomic ion is a group of many atoms combined together that have a charge. So in other words, when these atoms combine together, there was overall a net loss or a net gain of electrons, creating either a positive or a negative charge. And this group of atoms sticks together once it joins, and it really never comes apart, except in very rare circumstances that we won't deal with. So we can think of this group, this polyatomic ion, as a single unit. Okay, And, and so because of that, these units, these polyatomic ions, have their own names. And there's a table below that's going to be included on all of your upcoming tests and quizzes, so you don't need to memorize this. And it's a list of all of the polyatomic ions that we're going to use in this class. Now, it helps if you understand the organization of the charts that you can use a little bit more easily. The first column lists all of the cations, positively charged ions. And it's important to note that there's actually only one. The only polyatomic ion we'll deal with that has a positive charge is one called ammonium, NH4. It's one nitrogen and four hydrogens all sort of stuck together. So if I did just a really basic drawing of it, it might look like this. Okay? And in the process of combining together, they've given away one more electron than they have protons, and so they have a plus one charge. All the other columns of this table are anions. The first column of anions, they all have a minus one charge. The second column, they all have a minus two. And the third column, they all have a minus three. Okay? You're also going to notice as you look at these anions that with just a few exceptions, they pretty much all have one of two endings, either ATE or ITE. So it's good to know that when you see a word that ends in A-T-E or I-T-E, that's a little hint to you that chances are you're dealing with a polyatomic ion. Okay? All right. So we said that NH4 ammonium is the only positively charged polyatomic ion. Okay, so with the exception of that NH4, all the others have negative charges, and so they normally take the place of a nonmetal. So they kind of act like a nonmetal in a compound, meaning they're going to bond or be attracted to the positive charge of a metal. So an example of a polyatomic compound is calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is made up of calcium that, if we look on the periodic table, is in the second family, so it has a plus two charge, and it's made up of carbonate. Now, how are you supposed to know what carbonate is? Well, you'd go look in this chart, and sure enough, you'd see carbonate here, right? Its formula is CO3, so one carbon and three oxygens, and it all together has a minus two charge. Okay, so how would we write a formula for calcium carbonate? Well, very similarly to what we did in the ionic compounds packet, we'd write these two things side by side. So we'd say, okay, calcium has a plus two charge. Carbonate has a minus two charge, and we'd swap and drop. Right? And we'd end up with CA2, right? Because this negative two would come down here next to the calcium, and CO32. Now, when we bring 
a number down to make a subscript to say we're going to have a certain number of polyatomic ions, we always put the polyatomic ion in parentheses. And so then that 2 would go outside of it. Okay? The mistake a lot of people make is they think that that 3 is going to disappear. But that 3 is part of what carbonate is, so it can never go away. It's saying that every carbonate is made of one carbon and three oxygens. When you bring the 2 down, what the 2 is saying is that we're going to have two of those carbonate groups. All right. Now, a sort of interesting thing happens in this example. You'll remember from the ionic bonding packet that when you have two of the same subscript, you can reduce or simplify, much like you would a fraction. All right. So this is really just written as CaCO3. And since you don't have this 2 sitting outside of the CO3 anymore, you don't need parentheses. However, if it makes you feel more comfortable to put them there to remind yourself that CO3 is a polyatomic ion, you could go ahead and do that. Okay? All right. So they have some more examples here, and they remind you, as I just explained, that when you're writing formulas, you're going to treat polyatomic ions like they were single groups of atoms. And if you end up, when you swap and drop, needing more than one of the polyatomic ions, then you need to use parentheses and a subscript. All right, so for example, again, with calcium nitrate, calcium has a plus 2 charge. NO3, we can find on the list, has a minus 1 charge. And so when we swap and drop, we have just one calcium. But when this 2 gets brought down here, we need to remember not to get rid of that 3. That's part of what nitrate is. But we do now, since we're going to add another number, have to put nitrate in parentheses and then a 2. If that parentheses wasn't there, you'll notice it would kind of look like you had 32 oxygens, right? And that's not the case. What you really have is you have one calcium, and then you have two groupings of NO3. Right? So this 2 is telling you how many of the groupings you have. The 3 is saying that in each one of those groupings, you have three oxygens. So it's important to kind of think about what these subscripts mean now that we have so many of them. Okay? The last example on this page is the ammonium sulfate. So this is the one where it's a little bit different because the polyatomic ion is positively charged. But we're still going to follow the same general pattern. Ammonium, which we look up on our table, has a plus one charge. And sulfate is also a polyatomic ion, so we also look that up on our table, and it's got a minus two charge. And so we swap and drop. This two comes down, telling us we're going to need two ammoniums. And this one comes down, telling us we only need one sulfate. So we don't have to put the sulfate in parentheses because we're not adding an additional subscript. If it makes us feel more comfortable, that's fine. It's not wrong to put it there. So we will practice some more of this when you get to class.